But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. Paul, he's writing this letter, of course, to the ancient Romans, and he's pulling out some scripture from the Old Testament from something King David said. He says, their voice has gone out to all the earth. Their voice? Whose? Well, the sky, the stars, the planets, the moon. That's the voice. King David wrote that. Let's look back at the Psalms. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. King David, he was making the point that everyone knows that God is there, our Creator. You look around at the sky, it doesn't have a, a voice to say words, but it does inform us that we do have a creator. Look around you. God created everything. Then Paul asks a question to these ancient Romans. Let's look. But I ask, did Israel not understand? Question. Did the Jews of long ago not understand? Did they not know? Of course, they understood. Again, Paul is taking Old Testament scripture. This time it's Moses. God is speaking through Moses to his people. And he says that he will make them jealous and he will make them angry. What's God going to do? Well, God is going to take for himself people who are not Jewish and save them. Let's look at the scripture. But I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation, I will make you angry. Hmm. God, speaking through Moses to the Israelites who had turned to other gods. Really, we're talking about idol worship. Paul took this scripture from the Old Testament about the Israelites who were worshiping these false gods and making God, the real God, jealous and angry, and he decided to get even with them. They have made me jealous with what is no God. They have provoked me to anger with their idols, so I will make them jealous with those who are no people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Hmm. Is... There are other gods? No, there's no other God. No other God than the one true God we read of in the Bible. He is the only one. And that is what has meant that his name is Yahweh. Now, Paul has more to say about this, about the people, the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people that God took for himself when the Jews did not believe. This time he's quoting from Isaiah. Let's look at verse 20. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. You know, God was talking about the Gentiles. They were not seeking God. Why would they be? God had never chosen them as his people. Never. God chose the Israelites as his people, not them. Now, they were becoming God's people. Hmm. Well, did they follow the law and that's how it happened? No. It was through God's grace that was poured into their heart that changed them. They wouldn't have sought him before that. They were not called by his name. I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that was not called by my name. Let's go back to Romans and look at verse 20 again. Let's look. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. Okay, so God, he was, went to the people, the Gentiles, and he changed them. 
Now God is speaking to the people of Israel. But of Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Wow. God, he was speaking straight through the prophet Isaiah to the stubborn Israelites who had sinned against him. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices. God was patient with the Israelites for a long time. He was patient with his chosen people, even though they rebelled against him. They behaved sinful. They behaved contrary to his ways. They should have felt ashamed for their behavior against God. Hmm. Question. Did the people of Israel, was their behavior, was it right? Was it okay, even though they were God-chosen people? No. The people of Israel's behavior was sinful. It was the same as people today. There's people out there who profess to be Christians. They've been baptized. They attend church. And still, they behave the same as the people of the world. Sinful. If our behavior has been changed and we continuously are faithful to God, of course we're going to sin from time to time and need to repent. Of course we need to do that. That shows that grace has touched our heart and changed our life. But if we continue in sin, thinking, well, that's okay. I can have grace anytime. We need to watch Don't be like the people of Israel, thinking, well, God chose me. I can just go ahead and sin. God's not going to have judgment against me anyway. Be careful. Trust in Jesus for salvation, so God will not have wrath against you. Be careful. Check your heart. 